Hello and welcome to Biology Interest. Today I'm going to be talking about sexual life cycles. Now, sexual life cycles involve an alternation between meiosis and fertilization. Meiosis is where a diploid cell gives rise to a haploid cell, and fertilization is where two haploid cells, always also called gametes, fuse to form a diploid zygote. Now, we first need to just ask the question why is sexual reproduction so common? Because asexual reproduction, where offspring make genetic clones of their parents, seems simpler and more efficient, seeing as you don't need another organism to input their DNA. But most multicellular organisms are not solely asexual, and that they at least also have sexual reproduction, if not only sexually reproduce. And it's been decided that the reason they do this, and that they sexually reproduce instead of asexually reproduce, is that sexual reproduction offers many evolutionary advantages. And these could be because it helps increase genetic variation by making new combinations of genes, which may lead to an adaptive advantage if the environmental conditions change, meaning that the organism is likely to survive and, and keep on reproducing long into the future. So we've discussed why sexual reproduction is so common, but we need to look at what happens between the two events, meiosis and fertilization, because this can differ quite a lot between organisms. And there are three main categories we're gonna look at today. The first one we're gonna look at is the diploid life cycle. And this is the one most people know kind of about and this is where the multicellular diploid stage is the most obvious life stage of the organism and the only haploid cells are the gametes now this is used by humans and most animals early in the development of an animal embryo special diploid cells called germ cells are made in the testes or ovaries and germ cells can divide by mitosis to make more germ cells and so on and so on but then some of them are able to undergo meiosis making haploid gametes which are sperm and egg cells Fertilization involves a fusion of two of these gametes, usually from different individuals, although not always, and this restores the diploid state. And so it most, spends most of its life, this organism, in a diploid dominant life cycle. And so that's the one everyone's mostly aware of. I'm going to now discuss two uh, slightly trickier to understand concepts in life cycles, and that's the haploid dominant life cycle. And this is where the multicellular, or sometimes unicellular, part of the organism is haploid and that's the most obvious stage of the life cycle and it's often multicellular and that's the haploid stage instead of the diploid stage so it's the other way around to what i just discussed and in this type of life cycle the single celled zygote is the only diploid cell and this is used by fungi and some algae an example of a fungus that uses a haploid dominant life cycle is uh, the black mold you find on bread whose sexual life cycle uses this kind of format now when it's trying to reproduce, the haploid nuclei from the cells fuse to form a diploid nuclei, which are essentially equivalent to zygotes. The cell containing the nuclei is then called a zygospore, and this zygospore may stay dominant for a long period of time, but under the right conditions, the diploid nuclei undergoes meiosis to make haploid nuclei that are then released in single cells called spores. And because they're formed through meiosis, each spore has a unique combination of genetic material, the spores then germinate and divide by mitosis to make new multicellular haploid fungi. And so it's basically the other way around to what I just discussed, in the fact that it lives all its life, this organism, these organisms, in the haploid stage. But then they go into a diploid stage to allow for genetic recombination, meaning that they also have some variation in their genes. And so it's an okay way of doing it. I'm now going to discuss the third type of life cycle and that's called the alternation of generations. In this stage of the life cycle, both haploid and diploid stages have multicellular stages, though they are dominant to different degrees in different species. Whereas in the previous two, the main dominant life cycle was the multicellular one and the sub life cycle was uh, single cellular. In this type of life cycle, the alternation of generations, both forms are multicellular to certain degrees. And this type of life cycle is found in some algae and all plants. So the haploid multicellular plants are called gametophytes because they make gametes using specialized cells. Meiosis is not directly involved in making the gametes in this case because the organism is already haploid. Fertilization between the haploid gametes forms a diploid zygote. This zygote that's now diploid will then undergo many rounds of mitosis and give rise to the full diploid multicellular plant called a sporophyte. Then 
Specialized cells of the sporophyte will undergo meiosis and produce these haploid spores. These spores will then eventually develop into multicellular gametophytes, and then the cycle repeats round and round. So we essentially have two multicellular parts of the organism here. Uh, the main sporophyte part of the plant, which is the diploid part, but you also have like a quite a large multicellular haploid part of the plant called the gametophyte. So let's use a fern as an example. You have the haploid spores which germinate and then undergo my mitosis to produce a multicellular gametophyte, which is still haploid. Then, specialized cells of the gametophyte undergo mitosis to produce sperm and egg cells, which combine in fertilization to make a zygote, so we now have a diploid organism. This diploid zygote undergoes mitosis to form a full multicellular diploid sporophyte, and this is your big plant with the fronds uh, that you would think of as a fern. And on the sporophyte, there are specialized structures called sporangia, and inside of them, haploid cells, which are more spores, which can only contain a haploid DNA, are formed by meiosis. These spores are then released, can germinate, and the cycle starts all, ago, all over again. They'll produce a multicellular haploid gametophyte, so on, so on, so on. And so this can be a little confusing, but as long as you remember in the previous two, the main stage is the multicellular stage and the smaller stage is only singular celled. If you remember in this stage, both stages are multicellular and then they go around in circles. It helps to draw a diagram as I've drawn here. Uh, it should be easy to get around your head around. So although all sexually reproducing plants go through some version of the alternation of generations, the sizes of the sporophyte and gametophyte and how they work between species vary. So in plants such as a moss, the gametophyte is free living and is a large plant, while the sporophyte is small and depends on the gametophyte to exist. But in other plants such as ferns, both the gametophyte and sporophyte are free living. However, the sporophyte is much larger and that's what you think of as the fern. But in something like a seed plant, the sporophyte is much larger than the gametophyte, and that's what we would consider the plant, while the gametophyte is made up of just a few cells. And uh, in this case, it's completely contained inside the flower. It's hidden within the flower. So I hope that's kind of cleared up some, some issues, and it's kind of interesting to learn about how the different ways sexual life cycles actually occur, and how they can vary quite a lot. Uh, so I hope you like the video. Stay tuned for more videos.